Howdy! My name is Bonnie Smalley, and I'm going to tell you about the life and times of being Comcast Bonnie. Uh, most people don't know that Comcast has a large team of people who tweet for them that are supposed to provide you with better customer service. How many of you, show of hands, are not too happy with Comcast? I'm not surprised by this. So, uh, with that in mind, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a bit insane. Um, I was the only person working in Comcast headquarters with flaming red and pink hair. Brian Roberts did not like that very much. Um, I really am into tech. It's not my concentration, but if there's something new out there and it seems interesting, I'm going to learn it, which is really useful when you're in the cable industry because it's constantly changing. Um, a bit unconventional. Um, Comcast was not always happy with my methods, and ultimately that kind of screwed me in the end, but it worked out for my customers, and that's what matters most to me. So, how did I become a tweeter for a major corporation? Well, this is back in like 2007, 2008, when Twitter first came around. So, um, I signed up for Twitter. I have a three-letter username at Twitter. Woo! Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I had a personal account for a while. I was tweeting on that. And, um, I used to go on consumers.com, which is owned by, I think, Consumer Reports now. I used to go in there and I would comment on these stories about just really terrible customer service at Comcast, which you hear about all the time. You probably have all experienced it in some form or another. Not surprised. Um, one of the uh, directors for their new digital media team saw me complaining and helping these people and said, hey, you, you'd probably be really good at this. Do you, you want to come tweet for us? I'm like, really? Tweet? Like, for a living? What? <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm a loud mouth. I like to help people. That's what I do. I come from a social worker mom and a firefighter dad. So helping people is what I do. It's in my blood. So what did I do when I tweeted for Comcast? Everything. So any mention of Comcast on Twitter, on Reddit, on Facebook, on forums like broadband reports, anything, I got to deal with it. So you are on Twitter and you say, God, I hate Comcast so much. This sucks. I'd be like, hey, can I help? And then you'd either think I'm like a freak, you'd be like, are you a stalker or something? I'd be like, hey, um, I'll give you my information as long as you're not a stalker and help me out. Um, beyond that, we would have people who would actually walk in Comcast headquarters in Philly and be like, this is my bill. This is screwed up. You guys suck. And I'd have to go into the lobby with a security guy and deal with these people. And they always, almost always had a valid complaint. And it was usually something getting screwed up in the back end with customer service or the system, like the billing system had something wrong. Pretty common. Um, beyond that, <laughs> public outreach. <clears throat> I would go to like county fairs and stuff, just because I like to get out and do stuff. And you can tweet from anywhere. I mean, that's the great thing about Twitter. Um, so I'd go to all sorts of events. I, I was in Disney World and I heard people complaining about Comcast at La Cellier in Canada and Epcot. I'm like, hey, can I help you out? Here's my business card. I'm on vacation, but whatever. I want to help you out. Um, my entire group was in the office of the president, so we handled the worst of the worst. Um, and I'm going to go over some of these really crazy instances in a minute. Um, but we worked directly for the office of the president, so I dealt with Brian Roberts and Ralph Roberts before he passed away. Um, and anything that came to them, it would come through us. We'd check it out, see what we could do. <laughs> so here's the fun. Okay, stories from the front line. This is the juicy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Burning down the house. You think, wow, that must not happen very often. Tech goes to a customer's house, the next thing you know, you're getting a phone call from an angry customer because their house burned to the ground. It's happened more than once. Wow. <laughs> Dealing with customers who have had basically their life destroyed by a technician or something like that, not the most happy thing to deal with. And ultimately, they're not going to be happy with anything you tell them when you burn down the house. The best you can do is help them through it and, and be empathetic with their situation and be like, you know, I'm here with Comcast, but I'm not Comcast. I'm here to help you. Let's get this fixed. Uh, <laughs> going to the house. I had a client who had had probably 20, 30 different technicians at her house that tech supervisors out, just would not stop coming on Twitter and saying, this still doesn't work. This still doesn't work. Well, one day I happened to be in Baltimore for something unrelated and she started tweeting again. And I said, you know what, lady? You're about 10 minutes from where I am. I'm coming to your house. <laughs> really? <laughs> I did, and we got a problem fixed, and it turns out she just didn't like guys. So <laughs> she had a girl come to the house. It was cool. Great. Pig races. What? 
was at the county fair live tweeting a pig race as Comcast Bonnie. <laughs> Highlight of that whole year was sitting there with these cute little pigs helping customers up. Here, here's a picture of a pig while I, while I fix your internet. Here, that's cool. Um, being a robot. All right, so you said you were going to go to Twitter's abuse team. Well, Twitter thought I was robot and banned me. Um, I now have, I think I can do 20,000 tweets an hour. They upped my uh, limit wow. because wow. I was tweeting like a tweet every three seconds. Um, the reason that happened was uh, for the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2009, I believe, Fox Sports' transmitter in Atlanta got struck by lightning. And this is in the middle of like hockey, so people are freaking out. And you know, a lot of people are watching it and they're, they're starting to overload the trunks and the call center. So who becomes the single point of contact for millions of customers who are really irritated because they want to watch the Penguins? That's when Twitter banned me, because I was like, every three seconds, it's not us, the thing got struck by lightning, DirecTV's having problems too, Verizon's having problems too. Yeah, that happened a lot. Celebrities, that was pretty cool. I didn't expect this to happen at all. Um, that guy actually runs Xbox Live. That's uh, Major Nelson. Um, that's Ralph Roberts before he passed away. David Akers, who I had no idea was a football player. <laughs> I walked up to him like, hey, what do you do? He goes, uh, I play for the Eagles. I'm like, oh, that's good. Cool. what are you doing? I tweet. You know, what the heck is that? Whatever. Football, Twitter, what happened? You press the button and I saw you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What about the Eagles? The highlight of my career is in that upper right-hand corner, um, and this ties in with the Shorty Awards. Um, you probably know what the Shorty Awards are because it's a Twitter award. This is like the Oscars of Twitter. Um, this is how I win Comcast the customer service support, which I'll go over in a second. Um, I got to meet Grover, like the actual Grover <laughs> and his handler, which was like the coolest thing ever. It's like how many of you would like to see a childhood hero? Grover, so cool. Um, and that's me actually in a barn live tweeting from a county fair. Um, beyond that, um, I was also in the New York Times, I was profiled, because I was one of the first corporate tweeters out there, um, which was pretty neat. Got to talk to a reporter, got to get in the print edition of the New York Times, it's pretty badass. <laughs> so how the heck did I win Comcast, a customer service award? I mean, half the room raised their hands, and they didn't like Comcast. I'm totally there with you, but they paid my bills, so cool. Um, how it worked was with the, the Shorty Awards, your customers have to nominate you for this award. So it's not some industry thing where like, you know, J.D. Power and Associates has given you an award. These are actual customers that nominated me for this because they were happy with the level of service I provided them, which is great. Um, basically, it had to change the entire customer service conversation where you, you, most of the time when you call in, you're dealing with somebody, you don't know them very well. These are people who could just tweet me in the middle of the night, and I'd get them in the, middle, in the morning and be like, hey, I know you, we know your issue, let's get that fixed. It's still happening? All right, well, let's hand it to another guy. And just following through with these customers and empathizing with them, that's all they want. That's all you want. You want your stuff fixed, right? Or maybe a lower bill, but I can't help you there. Um, so, just doing my job and my love of helping people, despite the fact that Comcast did not like some of the ways I was going about doing it, um, was worth it for me. And it was worth it for my clients, too. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to grab me after this. Um, I can't fix your cable for you, technically, but maybe. So if you have a problem, let me know, because I like to fix things. Um, and also, I have that email address up there that's uh, my old team. They don't get to it as quickly as they used to, but you might get a response. So if you have a super bad problem, you might want to try that too. So that's all. <laughs>